Get ready for Solomon's Hey, giving the glory to God Yeah, you're hanging with Jason and Sean Get ready for Solomon's uh, So we're going to talk I about I believe can, can, can good Christian theology Include the idea of aliens The uh, Christ files Or... <laughs> <laughs> the, the crossed files. It's it's the still files. the X files, but it's red as the Christ Cross. files. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that, awesome. Gotcha. That's hilarious. That's awesome. awesome. But uh, so uh, so Sean, uh, he he did some homework on this. Um, so uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of introduce, uh, you know, just real quick uh, what we're going to talk about, um, and then you can take it from your notes. But uh, so ideally, you know, I've heard different people, <laughs> different atheists, who have challenged the Bible because it doesn't talk about aliens it doesn't talk about life on other planets um even now with you know the comic book world you got like the multiverse things like that and so the question is can you have a a a biblical christian theology using our 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 holy text that that we use that that we know about god and uh that we get to know the real god uh can we use that text or does a belief in aliens or or multiverse type of ordeal can that exist even though the text doesn't talk about it? So, uh, well, well for, first off, I, I think we need to clarify we're not actually talking about multiverse possibility. We're actually just talking about extra, uh, extra, <laughs> extraterrestrial. Yeah. 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 No. Well, we but, are extra. We are. We are extra. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about aliens or, or life on other planets or, uh, for that matter, galaxies. Okay. Okay. So. A uh, galaxy far, far away? Yeah, it can be yeah. a galaxy yeah. far, far okay. away, because they are. All uh, of them are, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Every single one of them. I, I, I think the important one of the important things to think about here is that when we look up into the night sky and we see what we call stars, we're talking about that those are suns. Mm-hmm. So around each of those suns are other planets that also are, may be reflecting light, so we may actually be seeing those as stars as well, um, but most likely not because of how far the light has to travel. But so if you imagine that there's a series of planets around each of those stars, each of those suns, to think that there's absolutely no other life but just us, I don't know. First off, I think it's it's a little ignorant. Um, two, the Bible is written for us here. It's not necessarily supposed to address life everywhere else. Um, this is not a new thought process. So astrotheology first began in 1714. Mm. Yeah. So we're going <laughs> to learn something pretty, today. Pretty y'all. old. Yeah. Um, and, um, the quote that I have here is the greatest challenge to the major Abrahamic religions, so religions based off of the Abraham lineage, um, which teach that human beings are purposefully created by God and occupy a privileged position in relation to other creatures. Does that make sense, or does that sound like a bunch of hooey? I mean, it, that's a lot of people's belief. Right. That we're, like, elevated. So the problem with... Uh, us even remotely trying to approach astrotheology is that we feel like there's us and there's nothing else. There, why would there be anything else? What's the point in anything else? I think that one of the the first tells is that we know that there are angels. So yeah. that means that God created another life form before he even created us and that served him. Before he created the earth. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even before all of that. So why not have even created other life forms on other planets that still exist? Now, are they higher or, or lower, air quotes, uh, than us? I don't have a clue. But does it matter? No. No. I mean, I think that's that's the most important part is... The, yes, there's the question of are they, you know are they out there? Do they exist? The question for us, or the question, I mean, I've talked very briefly about this with a couple people. The question is whether or not it matters to us. Does it does it affect how we act in our day to day lives? Right. No, or it shouldn't. I mean, there obviously you could say something about you know that you have a mindset of being higher 
than something. So maybe that could have effects on your behavior or something like that. But or we're the elect. Or we're the elect. Yes. Uh, I mean, I my my as I was kind of thinking about this topic as well. My first place I go to with this is it's kind of like what you were saying. Mathematically, um, I saw the calculation at one point, but statistics wise it's impossible for there not to be some other kind of intelligent life having nothing to do with belief. Right. Just the math of it doesn't line up for us to be the only intelligent life. Now, obviously God doesn't have to line up with math because he created math. So if, if God truly just created humans, then he truly just created humans. But obviously we can't know that. Well, we can if it becomes evident to us. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and what purpose? I, I, I think that most, uh, a lot of other Christians get hung up on the uh, the fact that so Christ died for us, which makes us more important because he sent his son for us. And so if there's other life, does that negate on um, the importance of what Christ has done? Has he done that on other planets? Hmm. Yeah. And and what we get, um, so one of the... the uh, well, we'll say this. We know he can't. Because oh yeah, God could do anything. Right, right, so that, right. That's that's point one. So yeah, exactly. In in the uh, Talmud, um, so the original um, Jewish texts, um, the text. I, I'm, I'm I'm probably going to mispronounce <laughs> this. So it, it, a book is called Avada Zara, and the segment or section that it's from is three B. I, I don't understand it myself because I, but, but everywhere that I've, I, I, I researched this kept coming back up. So I, I don't actually have a, you know, a Jewish text. So I, I don't know, but anyway, um, but it does say that God roams over 18,000 worlds. Now, what does that really mean? Um, the idea being that, there are at least 18,000 planets or worlds that uh, God deems important enough for him to oversee. So if it's important enough for him to oversee, then wouldn't they also likely have some sort of intelligent life right. that, that he has created? Um, you know, that we have to go to um, a Jewish text for that but little tidbit. I, I don't know. But I did go ahead... And pull out um, a few of our Christian scriptures. So Genesis one twenty six, and you know you can say that I'm taking this out of context, but I, you know I think there's some argument here. Uh, then God said, "Let us make human beings in our image." So us does that maybe not even imply that there could be additional beyond just God, the spirit and uh, Christ? I mean, I always, <clears throat> and, and Jason, you may have a, a different interpretation of this as well. I always interpret interpreted, I'm smart guys. I always <laughs> interpreted that as um, the father, son and the Holy spirit. Yeah. You know, he's, he's three people in one. Sure. Um, and it, I mean, I guess in my head, it makes sense that God could refer to himself as us. Mm -hmm. um, because he is three parts in one, but it might mean something else. But could he be more than just it, three it parts? It absolutely could, absolutely could. And 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 I think that so from that, then we begin to uh, say, okay, so um, what if there's a necessity on another planet that he's four in one or five in one? <clears throat> so what what is this us? Hmm. Well, see, so. I think I mean you know there are some some scriptures that says like Holy Council. Things like that, yeah. Uh, and most, you know, most Christian theology would say that's that's the Trinitarian God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, but the idea, you know, kind of for other planets, one, you know, God made us in His image. Uh, maybe He's revealing Himself in the image that He created us. Um, so, and we we are a spirit in a flesh body, uh, and we have a conscious, we have a mind, thought process. Yeah. Um, and so, but with other planets, other beings or whatever. And then the other thing too was, is what if there is another text that God put for another being of creatures somewhere else that is for them, but still shows his identity to them using that? Oh, absolutely. 
Um, so in Psalms 147.4, uh, it says he counts the stars and calls them all by name. So what if we already know that stars are suns and we know that for each sun that there's got to be other planets around it, what I mean, what's the point in calling them all by name if there's not some sort of significance to right. him in those? Right. I mean, I think the the overwhelming impression that we get in the word is that God loves his creation. Um, I think, obviously, we, we believe the Bible and we believe that, you know, God created us in his image um, and that he intends his word for us and that he sent his son for our salvation. I think the issue is when we start using the words only or or God and only in the same sentence. Um, yeah. Like we are... Putting it, him in a box. Who, who's to say this is God's only image? Right. Who's to say that, um, you know, obviously we in our sphere of understanding are the most significant beings, but saying uh, like a question of importance to God, uh, the qu- a question of importance says... This is more important to him than this, and he'll devote more resources here than he will over here to this less important thing. The idea of more and less resources doesn't compute with the concept of God. Right. Um, Everything is equally important to him because he doesn't have to worry about prioritizing energy and effort. Um, From my point of view, uh, I fully believe that we are exactly what God says we are. And I also fully believe that God might have said some of those same things to another race, but I don't think, and I think this is where a lot of Christians get scared thinking about other life. It doesn't illegitimize what God said to us. Right, exactly. It doesn't or, or make it done for us. Yeah, or is yeah. done for us, right. It's not like we're any less special to God because nothing can be less special to God. Right. Because he has an infinite capacity for holding things in special regard. Sure, he loves us and he created us in his image, and that's what works for us, but God sees all things. I mean, he might have just seen 3,000 years down the road that expressing himself in this way to us would be better than expressing himself with three arms or wings or, you know, whatever. Obviously, I'm being silly, but sure, it could be anything. Yeah, and I think that's and, – and, and kind of the reason why I wanted to talk about this was because I heard – uh, it's a guy named. Uh, he's got a show called Ask Science Mike, and I, I don't. I don't agree with a lot of. I don't agree with everything that he said. I'll say that. I'm not saying I don't agree with a lot of it, but uh, but he's he's a science guy. He's a scientist. Uh, he's more of a mysticist in or in, in that there's no real way to know God. That he's completely mystical. We can't understand him, and I I, I agree with that. Um, there's other things, you know. I guess, you know that are completely contrary to what we view as Orthodox Christian. Uh, but he does believe in the resurrection, even though he knows us beyond traditional science. Mm-hmm. But one of the things he talked about on, I think it was on relevant, actually the podcast was he was talking about life being found on Mars, some type of life form. And what does that mean for Christians? Uh, and I'm thinking, I don't know if it means it doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. It right? doesn't to me. At least. Um, I mean, even if there was in another intelligent life form, that doesn't really mean anything. Uh, I mean, Richard Dawkins would say, oh, well, that's the life form that put us here. Uh, that's the intelligent species that put the humans here. Uh, kind of like the deviants, the eternals, mm-hmm. and all that stuff, which we'll find out more about later this year. <laughs> uh, but in general, though... If you go to the theater. <laughs> well, I, I, I wanted to point out one other bit of uh, scripture that I, I think that is a really good argument. Um, <clears throat> and, and I wanted to get you guys' opinion on it uh, before we, we moved on and wrapped up. Um, so in John 10, uh, 14... Uh, Jesus is is talking about being the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. I uh, know my own sheep, and they know me, just as my Father knows me, and I know the Father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, too, that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. So what sheep... To what sheepfold? Well, I think that I would have to say that was specifically talking about the Jews being a flock, and then Gentiles not being a part of that flock or other flock that they brought into the sheep or the sheep brought into the sheepfold. I'd say that scripture is probably talking about that. I'd have to read it in context. I mean, 
Yes, I, I absolutely. And I think that's what I would immediately think. Uh, I think there is something to be said, though, for he says, I have other sheep.